Hello everyone and welcome to an absolute thriller of a game from round 8 of the FIDE Candidates Tournament 2022. It's Hikaru Nakamura versus Fabiana Caruana and this is one game that you will uh, definitely want to close all your tabs for uh, before checking out. You know, you do not want any distractions or notifications during this one as it's uh, even though the first 20 moves of the game are known theory and both Fabiano and Hikaru just blitz them out like instantly, uh, still the game is uh, absolutely incredible and so much happens in this game you will not uh, you, you you're not gonna believe this so uh not uh to spoil anything let's dive straight into it hikaru has the white pieces and he opens with e4 we have e5 by fabi knight to f3 knight to c6 and the bishop to b5 going for the ruy lopez and now not a berlin but rather a6 fabi goes for morphe's defense uh bishop to a4 knight to f6 and now uh castles going for the well-known knight captures on e4 the open uh, Spanish d4 uh, we have b5 challenging the bishop bishop to b3 and pawn to d5 so this has been played millions and millions of times uh, as I always mention uh, d captures on e5 and bishop to e6 so nothing worth mentioning here we have c3 bishop to c5 putting pressure on the f2 pawn uh, but it doesn't really matter as the rook defends the f2 pawn or, or does it knight b to d2 we have castles by fabi and now at bishop to c2 putting more pressure on the knight here and here fabi just captures an f2 knight captures an f2 uh, giving up two pieces for the rook and usually this isn't a good idea uh, but this position has been analyzed so thoroughly that of course uh, you know that if one fabiana corona plays it in a candidates tournament then you know it is definitely uh, legit so rook captures bishop captures with check king captures and now pawn to f6 so getting ready to open up the f file for the black rook uh knight to f1 uh, again this is all very well known so nothing new here f captures on e5 and king to g1 getting the king to safety and here we have queen to d6 now interesting about this position is that maxim vashiola grab already had this position against fabiano corwana uh, in this year's super bet chess classic and uh, fabiano lost this game in that game against maxim vashiola grab uh, fabiano played a queen to d7 but here he improves with queen to d6 um, uh, a, a, a very nice move that um, uh, well uh, he also played uh, not only with the black pieces but <laughs> with the white pieces as well but we're gonna get to that with bishop to e3 by Hikaru and now comes bishop to f5 uh, now interestingly uh, Caruana had this exact same position with the white pieces against the uh, Jordan van Forest in this year's um, uh, Tata Steel tournament that ended in a draw but in that game rook 8 to d8 was played but here we have bishop to f5 this is how uh, Fabiano improves on that game bishop to b3 declining the trade putting the bishop on this diagonal and now rook a to d8 uh, queen to e1 by hikaru and now knight to a5 putting more pressure on this bishop here and queen to f2 now putting uh, pressure on that c5 square uh, and now there is one game in the database that reached this exact same position between maria malitska and um, may austin uh, also uh, was played in this year uh, where knight capture some b3 was played you can capture this um, obviously as the the knight here will guard the c5 square so you don't have to worry about the nice in between bishop c5 but here five he just goes knight to b7 and it is now as of move 19 that we have a completely new game so that's how uh, the the open uh, spanish is um, uh, prepared and analyzed the first 20 moves are usually just blitzed out uh, and here we have rook to e1 by hikaru uh, pawn to c5 by fabi and this is where things get really really interesting so okay i uh, uh, fabi gave up two pieces for the rook but look at his center he has all of these pawns controlling all of these squares okay bishop controls g4 that's not a pawn but still uh, incredible pressure and the the absolute top move recommended by the engine here is bishop to g5 and no doubt this is what fabi was expecting and here uh you know everything just completely explode the, the the rook is attacked you don't really get to move the rook because if you move the rook then you run into um, uh, all sorts of uh trouble uh, yes you are defending the e5 pawn but it doesn't matter we can even just capture it uh, if rook captures bishop to f4 and it's not very pleasant but the real idea behind bishop g5 uh, is that Fabi can just give up the rook on d8 play c4 after bishop captures we're going to play c captures on b3 and the once Hikaru moves the bishop back we're going to create a pass pawn here with uh, b captures on a2 and after rook to a1 we're going to play bishop to b1 trapping the rook on a1 and the white will always be better here but Fabi has this analyzed hopefully Hikaru doesn't and that's why uh, Fabi plays it however 
Uh, Hikaru doesn't play the absolute top move recommended by the engine, nor the second move recommended by the engine, nor the third move recommended by the engine, but he plays a move that's not recommended by the engine whatsoever, uh, and that is Knight to G3. And this is uh, where Fabi really started thinking, and Hikaru pretty much played it instantly, uh, and uh, it's uh, unknown to us, at least for this moment, uh, Hikaru will probably mention in his analysis of the game uh, how he uh, came up with this idea. Was it like a, you know really an over the board decision, or does he have it prepared? Because it would be it would be incredible if he would have in this variation on move twenty, uh, like the fifth engine move prepared. That's actually very strong, but maybe not as strong as the first four. But you know. Uh, nothing serious that Fabi could take advantage of. It's hard to say. We will have to uh, wait, wait and figure this out. However, uh, this is the first moment where Fabi paused and started thinking, and basically he has to decide what to do with the bishop. And he plays bishop to d3. It makes sense. You want to play e4. You want to uh, keep the bishop on d3. Of course, uh, now, now you're threatening just to win a piece. If e4 comes, then the knight will not be able to move. So Hikaru immediately plays queen to d2, and now Fabi plays pawn to c4. And this is already a second interesting decision as e4 is very very potent for example knight h4 g6 uh, not allowing uh, any knights to come to f5 and if bishop h6 we just play c4 incredible stuff here once the bishop moves to d1 we're gonna play d4 uh, the position absolutely explodes and absolutely i mean e everything is possible here you cannot uh, you know claim who is better here here the better player is the the one who you know uh, moves his pieces better like it's a beautiful position uh, but uh, instead we have c4 by fabi going after the bishop right away and here hikaru had like an hour and 55 minutes on the clock so he did not spend any time whatsoever and fabi already down to one hour and ten minutes. Uh, bishop back to d1 by Hikaru and now rook to d7, uh, preparing to double up on the f file to put more pressure. Uh, and here, uh, again, Fabi uh, took a lot of time to decide uh, on this uh, uh, on this move. He's already below uh, the one hour mark. He's now somewhere around 59 minutes. Uh, and uh, Hikaru plays bishop to f2. Uh, this was a an excellent moment for Hikaru to play b4. Uh, if you can throw in this b4, you know, without uh, black being able to exploit it, uh, then that's already excellent. Of course, captures Alpasan is uh, out of the question because the bishop would hang. But okay, Hikaru goes for bishop to f2 and now rook... Uh uh, D to F7, uh, like I said, doubling up by the F file, and now Knight to H1, a brilliant uh, defensive maneuver from Hikaru. Uh, the Knight is just nicely defending the Bishop on F2, and the the doubled Rooks aren't really posing any problems for him. So E4, the Knight can now freely move. Knight to D4, Hikaru now down to an hour and 30 minutes, whereas Fabi has some 40 minutes on the clock, uh, and now Queen to G6. Uh, again, a very very interesting decision by uh, by Fabi. Uh, and uh, what can Hikaru do here? Well, he can pose a lot of problems for Fabi by playing h4. And now, how can Fabi uh, how can Fabi play against this? h5 is obviously coming. And uh, uh, does Fabi want to play h5? It's a very, very difficult move to play. And uh, Fabi is burning so much time that you simply do not have time to calculate h5. Just to give you a short example of what happens uh, after h5, uh, queen g5, we offer a queen trade, and the queen trade is definitely favoring Hikaru here. Uh, you kind of have to capture here. There's not all that much you can do. So captures, captures, let's say pawn to g6, now knight to c6. And it's uh, it's just a much better uh, position for white. There's not all that much to do. The knight is coming to e5. So let's say knight to d6, knight to e5, now attacking the rook uh, and the g6 pawn. It's uh, very, very uh, tough to play this. Now, the only move that keeps the position uh, playable for Fabi is e3, but good luck finding that from that position where you have to decide whether to push h5 at all. Uh, rook captures on e3 and now rook to e7. I mean, what, what is this? Knight captures on g6 isn't really all that impressive. You have to play knight to f3, but just to give you an example, if knight captures on g6, rook captures on e3, knight captures on f8, now we're going to play rook to e7. And the knight has no squares. The knight will be trapped. Uh, the g6 square is covered by the bishop. So if bishop captures on h5, we play king captures here. And now if bishop c5, we just move the rook, rook to d7, and the game continues uh, being pretty much equal. So... 
uh, it, it would be uh, incredibly difficult to, to calculate all of this, but h5, definitely the move Fabi has to play here. Uh, Fabi doesn't play it, he plays knight to c5, and now Hikaru does not hesitate. He pushes h5 himself, which doesn't seem to be all that scary, because, I mean, what is really happening? We just move the queen, and that's it. Well, queen to d6, and now bishop to g4. Hikaru finds uh, uh, the only move that keeps the advantage for white, because what can uh, what can Fabi play here? Hikaru has completely complete control over the e6 square, complete control over the e3 square, the knight nicely covers the bishop here, and uh, well, Fabi did sacrifice material for the attack, so where is this uh, uh, supposed uh, attack? You can't move the knight because then bishop e6 just wins the game. Uh, how, how do you approach this position? He plays h6, which is kind of the only useful move you can make, and now queen e3 by Hikaru, just nicely improving the position. Now uh, maybe queen to h3, we're going to win that e6 square by force, uh, and Fabi decides, all right, we can't have that queen to f4. He goes for a queen trade, and Hikaru accepts the this. And it's very interesting, uh, it's only move 30, Hikaru has uh, 55 minutes on the clock, uh, he, uh, um, <laughs> Karuana has 9 minutes on the clock, and Hikaru goes for a queen trade, and this game is uh, specifically... Uh, even more interesting than it is because Hikaru, uh, well, he he missed many opportunities to play much much better moves, and this is uh, this is maybe one of them, uh, because here after Bishop to f5, uh, now you're just threatening to pick up the queen, and Black doesn't really gain anything from capturing here because after captures and captures, it's just uh, uh, w w I mean White has a much better position, and uh, w w trading queens does not help Black in any way. You can't go for a capture because after we capture the knight will also be hanging, and if you, let's say, play rook to f6, um, because you have to play something, knight to g3 comes into the game, and uh, of course Hikaru will be much better here. So basically after bishop to f5, what you will have to do is queen e5, but now bishop g3. We start improving our position, and it's just, uh, you know, move by move, we claim more space and, and just win a whole lot of material. Uh, queen captures, uh, queen captures here, knight to e7 with check now, uh, we win the exchange, because because otherwise the queen hangs, so rook captures, queen captures, and uh, let's say queen captures on h5, bishop e5, and uh, I mean, it's uh, it, we're up a piece, let's not forget that, uh, we're, we also have this incredible pressure, black is not um, going to be able to defend uh, all, all of the threats here. Uh, but okay, Hikaru traded queens right away, let's uh, also remember uh, Fabiano has 9 minutes on the clock to make 10 more <laughs> moves, and they have to be incredibly precise. Rook captures on f4, and now knight to e6, attacking both rooks and the knight here, so you have to trade knight captures, bishop captures with check, king h7, and now bishop captures on d5. Five, uh, eliminating the base of the pawn chain, and now the pawns are extremely weak, and uh, this bishop here will not be very bishopy. It will basically be a pawn for the rest of the game. So rook eight to uh, f five. We have bishop to c six by Hikaru. Now not, not going for the pawn because then we can just push the pawn, but rather going for bishop to e eight. If we defend this pawn, then uh, Fabi has no more counterplay, so he has to capture it. And now bishop to d four. Now just improving uh, our position little by little. So. So three more moves um, uh, be before reaching time control, uh, and uh, well, it it's an incredibly tough position for Fabi. So here we have Rook H back to F5. Fabi now down to two minutes, two and a half minutes on the clock, and now Knight to F2 by Hikaru. Uh, you could also play Knight G3, but it's a forcing move that will force uh, Fabi to move the Rook. By playing Knight to F2, I think uh, Hikaru is just um, allowing uh, Fabi to spend more time while still putting pressure on this E4 pawn. So at some point you, you will want to capture this. Uh, and now comes rook to f7. Uh, just, uh, you know, uh, making a move. He still needs to make three more moves, and with two minutes on the clock, that's not an easy thing to do. And now, finally, b4 from Hikaru. If you can e execute it now, you should always do it, as it really... Um, uh, paralyzes uh, uh, Fabi's entire queen side. So h5 by Fabi, and now comes pawn to a4. And this was the first moment where, not the first moment, but one of the moments that I've mentioned where Hikaru just could have ended the, the game on the spot. Uh, h4 is a terrible blunder by Fabi, and you exploit it by playing bishop to e8. We just captured this pawn, he blundered it, and that's it. I mean, we, we were winning now with one extra pawn, we are much more winning. There's no good move here. After the rook moves, we can just capture the pawn, 
and that's it. We have the exact same position. We're just up one pawn. Another thing you could do is just grab this pawn that you've um, uh, so conveniently attacked so many times. Knight captures, bishop captures, uh, knight captures, and again, not all that much to do. But by playing a4, which is uh, which is a strong move, but it allows Fabi to remain in the game. B captures on a4, bishop captures on a4, and now pawn to h4. Now Fabi is creating some threats here. If he pushes h3, uh, could be could be very interesting. Uh, and Hikaru goes bishop to e3. Now attacks the rook, rook back to f5, and now uh, rook to a1. So this is already move 42. Uh, time control has been reached, uh, and the players now have additional time. Uh, but now Fabi plays h3, and this is such a beautiful move uh, that... Um, uh, well, really, really got Hikaru thinking, and I think uh, you will also enjoy it if you if you give it a few seconds and try to find the only winning idea for Hikaru here uh, while I give you a couple of seconds because it's it's just amazing. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on not capturing the pawn with the pawn or with the knight because that doesn't work. And for those of you who found rook to a2, congratulations as this is an incredible, incredible move to spot. Uh, just to give you an example, of why if you capture with the pawn, then rook f3 is the idea. That's why you can't uh, play this. You, we attack the bishop here. And if rook to e1, let's say you defend the bishop, rook g3, check, king h2, and now you just pick up the bishop that's defending the knight. That's the problem. Rook captures rook captures uh, with check and uh, that's it now you are no longer winning this position and capturing um, uh, with uh, uh, with the uh, knight isn't much better if you capture with the knight then we trade rooks rook f1 check rook captures rook captures with check king h2 and now rook to e1 again kicking away the bishop winning the e3 square once the bishop moves we kick it again uh, and now e3 is coming for example bishop somewhere e3 and the black spawns are, are marching forward so this pawn uh, this rook to a2 move is the only move that um, uh, still uh, uh, keeps the game winning for hikaru because also one of the threats here is just h2 i mean I mean, look at this we can capture here bishop captures we play h2 check you have to capture it and then the, the other rook captures um, uh, the knight back so we win back the two pieces for our rook so here rook a2 by hikaru again played it fairly quickly h captures on g2 and now another unique move that hikaru had to find in order to continue the game properly because here if you capture again rook f3 is extremely strong going after the bishop bishop to d1 blocking this rook's approach to f3 and now uh, again and Fabi is struggling to find moves. Here he plays rook to f6, he just defends the pawn, but now bishop g4 going after the rook. Rook to d5, now king captures on g2. We eliminate this pawn and we no longer have to worry about it. Rook g6 attacks the bishop, king g3. We have bishop to f1, and now comes bishop to, uh, bishop to d4. Not rushing anything, not going after the uh, pawn here, because here the, the tactics just work in uh, Fabi's favor. Uh, your knight is hanging. If you move the knight, the bishop is hanging. If you defend it, then everything is hanging. Just captures, 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 and uh, well, you've thrown the game away. So bishop to d4, uh, beautiful move. Uh, just you know, centralizing the bishop and uh, uh, taking away squares from Fabi's rooks. Bishop to d3. And and now king to f4, improving the uh, position of the king, king to g8, and now bishop to f5, attacking the rook, rook to h6, and now knight to g4, just winning more squares, attacking the rook, rook back to d6, and now knight to e3, attacking this rook, rook to b5, and now bishop to c5. Uh, again, winning even more squares. Rook to f6, and now king to e5. Look at this beautiful king just, you know, marching his way all the way to the to the other half of the board. King to f7, and now comes knight to d5. And this knight to d5 is maybe the third move in the game where Hikaru rushed it a little bit, as he could have ended the game right away. With, with rook to f2, there, there is no move, basically. Fabi can play, now you are threatening bishop to e6, and it's game over. There's really no good, good way of defending this. But he plays plays knight to d5, which is seemingly the same thing, but now Fabi can again uh, give up some material and continue the game. Rook captures on f5 with check, king captures, and now e3 opening up a discovery here. King to e5 and now pawn to e2. So Hikaru still <laughs> winning here, uh, but Fabi with the passed pawn on e2. 
uh, bishop to f2 guarding d1 square now comes rook to b8 now we want to go all the way around uh, guard d1 square and fabi now wants to promote his pawn so bishop to e1 we have rook to e8 with check and now comes king to f4 another move uh, that hikaru played pretty much instantly the, where, where again uh, king to d4 is just um, uh, so much stronger as there really isn't a move you can play if rook to e4 check king to c5 now uh, there, there's no way a good way to continue this if rook to e6 you defend the a6 pawn knight to c7 we attack the rook we go after the pawn and after another check king d4 rook e4 check king d5 now you're out of checks you're gonna push this pawn we're gonna capture on a6 and uh, the the position is winning however after king to f4 he gave fabi another shot at uh, at saving the game and fabi takes it almost immediately he plays g5 with check and this is such an important tempo uh having the pawn not on g7 but rather on g5 uh, that it might definitely influence the race because of course you cannot capture if you capture rookie five check just picks up the knight so king to g3 this is uh, uh this square is much less active than the than where hikaru's king previously was and uh, you know where it would be on d4 and now comes rook to e6 and this is where uh fabi fabi misses it here okay fabi was again low on the clock but rook to e5 is is incredibly strong and um uh, it would be very, very difficult to play this. The knight is hanging, and once you move the knight, uh, we're going to play rook f5. Now going for rook, rook to f1, and once you capture this and rook to f1 is played, rook to a1 guarding the bishop, and now king to f6, you get this position where it's not going to be easy to, uh, to look for chances here. Uh, it's just a very, very, very tricky position. Probably with perfect play, you can win this, but this was Fabi's best uh, chance. Fabi played rook to e6 instead of e5. He defended the pawn, but now there is no good way to um, uh, get the rook to f1. He will have to go uh, all the way around, but, uh, well, easier said than done. Hikaru plays king f2. We have rook to h6 and now king to e3, hoping for rook to h1. Uh, so uh, he can play king to d2 to defend the bishop this way. But uh, Fabi repeats, rook to e6 check, king to f2, and now rook to h6 again. Not going for this um, uh, king to d2 move now. Uh, because if after this rook to e6 check you go to d2, then we play rook d6. And again, you've uh, you've blundered the game. If rook to a5 guarding the knight, just bishop e4. We go after the knight, and now this is a big problem. So instead, uh, we have king back to f2, and Fabi repeats, rook to h6. Uh, hoping to, 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 to claim a draw here where uh, Hikaru uh, has given Fabi so many opportunities to bounce back but now Hikaru uh, goes again for the only winning idea and that is knight to e3 and this is such a, a difficult maneuver to spot you have to play knight e3 bring the knight to g2 move the bishop from e1 put the knight on e1 and your position will then and only then be winning and still if uh, with perfect play from Fabi it's it's uh well, you, you have to be a magician to win this. Hikaru, uh, Fabi played rook to f6, and this allows Hikaru to win the game very easily. But after rook to h2, the game would not be easy at all. Okay, we play knight, knight to g2 to defend the bishop. Rook h3 now. This is how we defend. We keep the king here, not allow the king any squares. And after rook to a5, going after our pawn, we're going to push pawn to g4. If king g1, now we play rook to f3. And it's, uh, it's still very, very hard to win this. For example, bishop d2 we play rook f1 check if king h2 rook to d1 uh, very 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 tricky stuff if, if, if now rook to a2 we play bishop to b1 and now rook to b2 and you get this position where again okay you will win this with white but it's it's such a scary position that uh yeah, uh, the, the, this game definitely deserves to be in the candidates tournament. But uh, Fabi uh, rushed it with rook to f6 as he was again very low on the clock. Now king to g3, we have rook to f1, but now just knight to g2. So this is much different than the position we discussed. Uh, rook back to f6 and now bishop to f2. Now the knight is coming to e1. King to g6, we have rook to a5 and now rook to e6. Uh, we have knight to e1 now, uh, now blockading the e1 square, and now bishop to f5. We have knight to f3 by Hikaru, 
and now rook to d6. We have knight to d4 now, not allowing the, the rook to be activated. Bishop to d3, defending the e2 pawn, and now rook to e5, going after the e2 pawn. King to f6, and now knight to f3. And he was in this position on move 74 uh, after all of this has been done, that finally Fabiano Caruana resigned the game, and Hikaru Nakamura gets his second victory in the candidates tournament, which brings him to a total of plus one. Uh, and this was uh, this knight to f3 move was already played uh, after six hours of excruciating play, and uh, Fabi Fabi had enough here because now Hikaru is covering all of the squares. There is absolutely no move Fabi can make, uh, and uh, well, th th there's just no point in trying. Uh, the only thing you could do is maybe offer a rook trade, but Hikaru happily trades as you know he is up a piece. Uh, so so there's that. Uh, so yeah, incredible, incredible stuff by Hikaru. So basically what happened in this game, uh, Fabi, who is uh, one of the most prepared players in the world, got out prepared by Hikaru. Now the only question is, did Hikaru out prepare him uh, not at home, but actually did Hikaru just, uh, uh, you know, destroy Fabi's entire preparation uh, with this knight, the g3 move over the board? That, that's the real question. If that's the case, then, uh, I mean, that's incredible stuff from Hikaru. Uh, because you, you can be absolutely sure Fabi was prepared for the absolute top engine moves here. Like like we said, bishop g5, queen to g3, queen to d2. But Hikaru's knight g3, uh, Fabi was not prepared and he started burning a lot of time. Just for his next two moves, he wasted over an hour. And, uh, well, it was just not enough to... Um, at the tackle all the all the game had to offer and uh, even though Hikaru gave him a lot of chances to, uh, to bounce back into the game uh, in the end Hikaru was victorious and what does this mean for the standings we're going to show the standings after we show one more uh, game from round round eight but basically now with Fabi who was trailing uh, by half a point uh, uh, to the leader Nepomnishi uh, is now down a full point behind Yanni, behind Yanni Pomishi. Nepo drew his game today, uh, so he is definitely the clear leader. But uh, Hikaru now with plus one also uh, is very, very, very close to the leaders, uh, one and a half point away from uh, from Nipomnishi. And as Nepo still has to face Fabi in the second half of the tournament, uh, uh, Nakamura will also get his chance against Nepo. Uh, pretty much everything is still possible. And Nakamura gets one step closer to challenging Magnus Carlsen for the World Chess Champion title if Magnus you know decides to play in the end uh, but you know if Hikaru wins I'm pretty sure Magnus will, <laughs> will play uh, so yeah uh, that's the game hope you guys uh, enjoyed it sorry for a bit of a longer video but uh, this I, I, I'm pretty sure this was the the absolute most exciting game of the of the of the tournament it had so many ups and downs so many you know if you made a series on these ga this game it had it, it would have like the three or four seasons it's you know absolutely spectacular game uh, so yeah, I really hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to uh, wish a very happy birthday to Thomas Mumford. And I would like to thank, and it was in this position that Austin had a birthday, David Kimura, Brian Tremper, uh, and Stephen McNeil for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of the candidates uh, until it finishes. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.